I love spring. Some of my earliest memories are of seal hunting as a family. Peering out over the water, hoping for a seal to surface. I'm visiting my relative Joanny and his grandson Isuardo, and they've been kind enough to bring me out seal hunting at the flow edge. I don't know what I'm to Oh, <laughs> At some point in my childhood, I realized there are people out there who don't like seal hunting. Every spring, I'd watch people on the news call seal hunters horrible things. Yeah. 
Hei, mikä tahtoo jättää oma vielä näin kotiin? Ottumena. Mä en ole Their grandfather used to come home with the seal, and they were just like huskies, dive right into the meat. No Everything was just At first, blood. apparently. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be scary in any other culture, but to us, it's like very so cute. cute. <laughs> I wanted to make this film because it bothered me when I saw animal welfare groups portray seal hunting as an evil and greedy thing. The images and statements they put out don't reflect the seal hunting I know. They don't even mention Inuit, and my friend Ayu Peter is fighting to change that. Ayu is a sealskin clothing designer, a lawyer, and longtime activist for Inuit seal hunting rights. When I came here, I learned how to work with sealskin. My mother-in-law was always sewing, and I wanted to learn how to work with sealskin, and I was able to sell beautiful sealskin products, and it allowed me to stay home and raise my children from home. Mm. These are two different kinds of seal. This is hub seal, and this is ring seal. This is the kind of coat I would want if I were a seal in the Arctic. <laughs> seal skin dyes really nicely. And I find the harp seal ones are just really classy because you can still see their spots at the bottom. So I took this part from here and the center part I took from the center, obviously, which is darker, and I turned it into a shawl. And it's very simple. I like simple designs. You want to see the big mitts? Yeah, I want to see everything. <laughs> the big mitts would also have the same idea, where you have the big seal skin, and then you could line it with the sheared beaver, kind of beaver here, to make it nice and warm. Mm -hmm. 
I know a lot of Inuit like Ayu who depend on sealskin sails for their livelihood. Our economic options are very few, so the sealskin market is extremely important to us. Unfortunately, we have fewer and fewer places to sell our products because animal groups have been fighting since the 1960s to shut down the sealskin trade. Anti-sealing campaigns focus almost entirely on the spring hunt around Newfoundland and the Gulf of St. Lawrence in southern Canada. They try to convince everyone that this hunt is cruel and inhumane and that the problems with it are unfixable. They argue that the only way to address their concerns is to totally ban trade in sealskin. But regardless of how you feel about that hunt, most seal hunters in Canada and the world are actually Inuit. We hunt seals all around the Canadian Arctic, as well as Alaska, Greenland, and Russia. But animal groups make it sound like seal skins all come from that one spring hunt in the south of Canada. They call it the Canadian seal hunt, or even just the seal hunt, which completely fails to acknowledge that Inuit are an important part of the seal skin market. We need to remind the world we exist. But it's difficult to get our message heard because anti-sealing protests tend to be loud and confrontational, whereas Inuit anger is much quieter. In the old days, if someone upset you, you'd insult them with a satiric song. Then they'd take a turn with the drum and tease you back. It's kind of like a modern day rap battle but Inuk style, so more quiet and slow. You'd go back and forth until laughter replaced the tension. And if you lost your temper, you'd lose the battle. Because losing your temper can be a sign of a guilty conscience. The song battles are long gone, but we still try to stay calm and reasonable when we're upset. How does a culture with an understated anger fight against a group that's infamous for the exact opposite behavior. How could these groups work for so many decades to crush our industry without ever having seen it with their own eyes? Anti-sealers have carefully developed the image of commercial sealing as a massive and evil operation, and they say it's inherently inhumane. But for us, this is what commercial sealing mostly looks like. Thank <laughs> you.
I've seen many campaigns argue that sealing should end because it's not moral to kill a seal just for the fur. They say fur is shame and a frivolous luxury. But Inuit defy that argument because we eat the meat. And for us, a warm coat is not a luxury, it's necessary for day-to-day -day survival. When I look at seal skin, I see an ethical and sustainable economy that feeds people. Natural fur also keeps our hunters afloat if they fall through the ice, which is happening more often due to climate change. Once the seal skins are cleaned and dried, the last step is to clean off the oil residue by rubbing them on the snow. Lassa Lucy has been selling seal skins his whole life and is still one of the most active sealers in his community. <laughs> Since our hunters live in tiny, remote communities and don't necessarily speak English, the government of Nunavut arranges for a wildlife officer in each community to buy skins from hunters throughout the year. Then, the government collects all the skins from all the communities and combines them for sale at international auction on the hunter's behalf. This is how Inuit take part in the global commercial sealskin market. This allows us to continue our traditions and take part in the modern world. It was our main economy for over a hundred years. But in 1983, everything changed. Canadian assassin! Eh bien, c'est fini, ça doit cesser. C'est pour vous. Greenpeace, the International Fund for Animal Welfare and other groups, put out intense anti-sealing campaigns throughout the 1970s and 80s. As a result, in 1983, the European Union banned products made from white coat harp seal pups. Even though the legislation only targeted one type of seal skin that we don't even sell, the campaigns ruined the reputation for all types of seal skin, and the whole market crashed immediately. It was our Great Depression. I want to talk to someone who lived through this, so I've gone to see Lassa Lucy. It's a typical February day at minus 32 degrees Celsius, minus 46 with the wind chill. I'm an urban Inuk, so Ayu lent me her warm hunting gear. I'm bundled up in layers of seal, caribou, and wolf fur. Lassa Lucy says it's a pretty nice day, so he's just wearing his lighter fabric parka. Lassa Lucy 
They can get the Kakama, Tamakuna, all my women on the Sukhoi Solomini. I'm going I'm <laughs> Just 
The 83 ban was a life-altering event for Inuit. I grew up in the aftermath. <laughs> Suicide was once a rare thing in our communities, but as a result of the trauma from residential school abuse, forced relocations, and other destructive government policies, Inuit began taking their own lives at alarming rates in the 1970s. When the ban hit in 83, it was yet another layer of stress on our communities, causing widespread hunger and hardship. Within a year, our suicide rates spiked even higher and have been among the worst in the world ever since. To this day, we're still working to undo the damage. It took us 25 years to repair the reputation of sealskins and rebuild demand. Sealskin prices climbed back up to about $100 per skin, which is almost enough to make a living on. I grew up thinking the poverty and hunger I see around me every day is normal. To think this hard-earned recovery could actually relieve some of this hardship makes me so hopeful. Unfortunately, the anti-sealers are still at it, and they're now pushing the European Union to pass a new ban that's even worse than the last one. It would reject all seal products, so that means all types of seal skin and even the meat and oil. I can't believe these headlines. Under the proposed ban, seal products would not be allowed into the 27-nation bloc. Inuit leaders from Canada and Greenland swiftly condemned the draft legislation, despite a special exemption for products from traditional Inuit sealers. I don't even know what they mean by traditional. Everywhere I look online right now, the anti-sealers keep pointing to this exemption, but they know very well that the 1983 ban also had an exemption for Inuit, and it did nothing to protect us. Soon, EU parliamentarians will be voting on the new ban, and we hope to convince them to vote against it. I love coming to my own backyard. There's no trees here and everything is frozen. And this is the context of our life, which is so far removed from animalists and people making decisions on hunting seal. A hunter is coming in on his snow machine. He's been out there for hours, maybe even days. And I'm hoping that he, he caught a seal that will provide food for his family and others in this community. It is a very harsh environment, and we should be allowed to eat our food and continue our culture and our tradition, which we are very, very proud of. 
Those guys are so tough. Man, I'm so glad I wasn't born a man. <laughs> I would have to endure that cold. Oh, man, that's tough. I'd deliver a baby any day than going hunting like the men do. <laughs> <laughs> We're just days away from the EU vote. Ayu and a few volunteers are heading to Europe to stand up for a fellow Inuit. Natsuk is a fellow seamstress, Mika is a hunter and dog team owner, and Joshua is the head of the Iqaluit Hunters Association. Upon their arrival, we're surprised to see giant anti-sealing campaigns there already. The International Fund for Animal Welfare have a humongous inflatable seal balloon, and the Humane Society International set up a jumbo TV with anti-sealing ads. You're not in favor of a, a ban on seals. But in the in the in the legislation that we will vote at noon, there is an exception for Inuit people, so they can go on with for their personal use with, uh, with uh, killing seals, and that's the only exception to, to preserve the people of the Inuit. For me, the exception is of no use because once the commercial hunt goes down, once yes. the price goes down, we won't be able, he won't be able to make any money of the seals on which he depends, on which he and his wife depends. So whether the exception is there or not, we are being affected yeah, without yeah. our okay. will. I will think about it. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Why is this guy still talking about personal use? Ayu is telling him that she sells sealskin clothes for a living. The EU parliamentarians seem to be having a really hard time understanding that we're part of the commercial market. They're still picturing little Eskimos in igloos with no need for money. Ayu and the hunters are handing out pamphlets, and standing right beside them are anti sealing campaigners handing out little white baby seal dolls. It's been illegal to hunt white coats in Canada for 30 years now. But they keep using images of them, deliberately misleading the public. We now know they've been here for months, giving out thousands of these white dolls. These are huge organizations with so much money to spread misinformation. And here we are with no resources to fight it. As we wait for the parliamentarians to vote, we can see how few of them we've been able to reach. It's us versus the little white seal dolls, and we see a lot of dolls in the room. Since no one thought to ask Inuit to be part of the discussion, we didn't stand a chance of stopping this ban from happening. We don't want to make a 
Ashi waktu itu ini nalarin, kena ya kan itu, tomato mungkin ayuh sari kena ni amat. Ibu kedua dah itu baru suku tiang roti ubat ini pijat jenis suku roti. Sakit tak kaya. Ubat ini belum ni, ini mana yang lebih aku sih dan unit itu sakit ni pijat tau sih mungkin kaya. When animal groups pretend we don't exist, or that we're frozen in time and untouched by the modern economy, this is what happens. I feel for Joshua. As the leader of his hunters association, it's plain to see he feels the weight of responsibility. They could have chosen a certification program based on animal welfare standards. They could have regulated things such as killing methods or quotas, boat size or daily catch limits. But instead, they chose the harshest option, designed to crush the entire market. Now, we have no choice but to try to overturn the ban. Ayu is talking to the National Inuit Association to discuss our legal options. I want to confront the anti-sealers. They keep saying this new ban isn't targeting us. But after the last ban, sales dropped from approximately 30,000 skins a year down to less than 1,000. What makes them think it's going to be any different this time? So I've been looking at all the major anti-sealing campaigns, and the same names keep popping up over and over again. There's only a handful of them. I've left them all messages asking for interviews, including Greenpeace, which to Inuit are the icons of anti-sealing. But while I was looking up Greenpeace, um, this radio interview from 1978 popped up on YouTube. Uh, and in it, Paul Watson, a former Greenpeace leader, talks about why he left the organization. Listen to this. Mr. Watson, how easy is it to raise money against the seal hunt? The seal uh, hunt has always turned a profit for the Greenpeace Foundation. And then other organizations like uh, IFAW, API, Fund for Animals also uh, make a profit off of uh, the seal hunt. You suggesting that they, they fight for seals rather than other animals because it's easy or easier to raise money that way or because it, it's a profit maker for them? Well, it's definitely because it's easier to make money and because it does make a profit because there are over a thousand animals on the endangered species list and the seal isn't one of them. See, the thing is, is the seal is very easy to uh, exploit as an image. We have uh, posters, we have buttons, we have shirts, all of which portray the head of a baby seal with uh, uh, tears coming out of its eyes. Uh, baby seals are always crying because uh, they're always uh, the salt tears keep their eyes from freezing. And because of that, uh, coupled with the, the horror of, uh, of a sealer hitting them over the head with a club, it, it's an image which is, just goes right to the heart of, uh, of uh, animal lovers all over North America. And now we have a dozen people this year from Greenpeace, California. I mean, they're coming from the highest standard of living region in North America. They're traveling to the place of the lowest income per, per year area on this continent, telling them not to kill seals because they're cute but, but non-endangered species. That was over 30 years ago, when the Atlantic harp seal population was around 2 million. Today, it's nearly 8 million. But lots of campaigns still imply that seals are endangered to raise money. Like these ones from PETA, using the slogan, Save the Seals. But nobody can argue that harp seals are endangered with any kind of honesty. I guess it was too hard to resist all that easy money, 
because shortly after that interview, Paul Watson started his own animal organization, the Sea Shepherd Society. He went right back to anti-sealing and is using the same misleading imagery to this day. IU's convinced a collective of Inuit organizations to launch two lawsuits to try to overturn the ban through EU courts. I think when I was asked why I wanted to go to law school, my, one of my reasons was that, well, I would like to be able to explain the Western laws that are affecting Inuit way of life um, in a language that the elders can understand. It wasn't necessarily because I wanted to be a lawyer. I'm not a practicing lawyer. But I wanted to understand how come there's so much injustice uh, in this world, and is there a way that we can change it? I didn't suddenly wake up and, and think, oh, I want to be an advocate, and I want to be poor forever and just fight for Inuit rights. It, it didn't happen like that. But I think I had a very strong sense of what was right and wrong. I think people should be allowed to speak their own language and have their own culture and live their own lives in, in this beautiful country. It's been about a year since the new ban was passed. Before the ban, Inuit were selling around 60,000 skins a year. Now we're selling less than half that number. And the prices for each skin fell from around $100 down to about $10. That's just the raw skins. There are also the losses on finished products made from seal skins, like mitts, boots, and coats. I also cringe when I think of how much less meat people are bringing home to their families. We're already the most food insecure indigenous people in any developed country, with seven in 10 Inuit children going to school hungry. In all of North America, our region has the highest poverty and unemployment rates and the highest cost of living. When I tell Southerners that we're sometimes paying $28 for a cabbage, $82 for 12 cans of ginger ale, and $18 for a jar of cheese whiz, they're stunned. With $50 in hand, an Inuit hunter could choose to buy a tiny amount of junk food, or he could buy fuel to go hunting, bringing enough seal meat to feed his entire extended family. Fresh, local, wild organic seal meat that's more nutritious and healthy than any meat you can buy at the store. That's why the sealskin market is so important. It's not just about tradition for us. Hunting is still the best way to feed Inuit, and the cash from sealskins keeps that cycle going. When that cycle is interrupted, the pressure to look at other economic options increases, and we have very few options. For example, the Canadian government is proposing underwater seismic testing around Baffin Island, my home, to explore offshore oil and gas reserves putting extreme stress on several of our communities. We're not talking about a tiny island here. Baffin Island is about twice the size of the UK. Seismic testing involves underwater explosions at decibel levels that studies have shown to cause damage to the hearing of marine mammals. These explosions happen every 10 seconds for hundreds of kilometers. Niri Iqalukjua is from Clyde River, one of the biggest sealing communities that was hardest hit by the seal product bans. He's speaking out about seismic testing because his community has seen it before. In uh, 1974, uh, Next 
Even in the face of poverty, Neri's community has been fighting for 45 years to protect one of the most delicate ecosystems on the planet from one of the most destructive industries. All this time, instead of getting help from animal and environment groups, his community's main sustainable economy has been under attack. Ironically, by fighting to save the seals, all these groups have inadvertently put all the Arctic animals, not to mention us humans, at higher risk. I'm amazed Nuri can speak with such a calm and clear voice, because the whole thing makes me want to scream. It's been a while since I contacted all those groups and never got a response. One of the names I see in the media a lot is Rebecca Aldworth, who's the um, go-to anti-sealing person for the various chapters of the Humane Society. Uh, she's the one who organized a photo shoot with Paul McCartney and his wife Heather Mills, which got a lot of media attention. Um, it's campaigns like that that have helped them be really successful. They've got over $200 million in assets now. They're definitely one of the bigger animal groups. So I'm going to try contacting Rebecca Aldworth directly. Ayu is going to Europe again. Last time she went, it was just days before the vote on the seal product ban, and the parliamentarians had already made up their minds. This time, she's going well before decisions are made on our lawsuits. Since we are traveling to Europe as ambassadors and educators on behalf of Inuit, Inuit Nunavut, and Canada, and... What's even more awesome a younger generation is joining us in the fight. A group of Inuit political science students based in Ottawa are going on a speaking tour through Europe. Ayu and I are helping them prepare their presentations to EU parliamentarians and ambassadors. Ayu's got lots of meetings and media interviews lined up in Stockholm and Copenhagen. The students are going to Paris and Brussels. Hopefully, the Inuit message can reach enough people before the EU court decides on our lawsuits. We're in Brussels right now. We're waiting for a very important meeting to talk about uh, seal issues, polar bear issues, and climate change. This legislation is not uh, based on the fact that we treat our animals well, that we do sustainable hunting. I'm going to need your help in finding ways to reverse this legislation. I want to keep the dialogue open with the Europeans on how we can move forward from here. The exemption is inhibiting us to have a sustainable way of life. We want to get the word out that, you know, we exist in this world and they're, take, they're trying to take away all our rights. I'd like to introduce you to Mrs. Yakansari and Mr. Tarrant, who are both members of the European Parliament. At the bare minimum, we ask that you educate your people and yeah. on how the 
propaganda that the animal rights groups are spreading and really all we really ask is economic equality and to achieve that we have to stop the cultural prejudice that is imposed on us by not being allowed to benefit from our natural surroundings without having to drill into the ground and that's really all we want as a people. Thank you for inviting us here today. I do have my understanding for your situation. We, we try to do our best how to uh, how to change this uh, old decision. I don't know, actually, I don't know how it's possible, but uh, I can ask the commission to do its utmost in order to correct this kind of decision. I mustn't tell you. You have been impressingly, Im lobbying more impressingly than the Canadian Embassy has been able to do on me on yeah, four true. years, actually. Sealing is sustainable, seal skins are sustainable. What you did not say, but what you, one could add is, well, the alternative to have a artificial fur coat an artificial fur coat is made of the oil and not renewable resource, and you have a hell of a trouble when you try to get rid of it. About nature. Yes. <laughs> oh my God, man! No, 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 no. They're doing a photo. Photo. Should I put this on? Yes. Canadian seal Inuit. There's a difference legally. You see. I'm not afraid of anything. But if, if you publish it, I will be a dead man walking. <laughs> it looks very good. Come closer. Despite my looks, I don't bite. <laughs> Maybe I do. This is the North Pole. This is Greenland. And I would have been born here many years ago. This whole area is where Inuit live. But they were colonized by four nation states. Canadian Arctic being colonized by uh, Canadians, eh? And the Americans here, Russians, and Danes here. But we remain the same people. One language, one culture, but different influences. The first time I saw this projection of a world map was in a seminar on peace and war. And then the lecturer said, this will be the most strategic area of the world in the future, yes. due to the encounter of continents, to the minerals, mm -hmm. and other things beneath the sea. Yes. This area is very, very rich in minerals, in oil, in gas. It will provide a lot of richness mm -hmm. if you are to mine it. But we do not wish to be materially wealthy if it's going to mean the destruction of this area. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be. We want to do it safely. Of course, we want to make money. We want to be part of the economy. We want our people to take part in this. But it has to be done safely. I think we have to listen to the people who have been the guardians of this earth, because we can't just up and leave to another earth. We, we have to safeguard the earth that we live in. This trip has been encouraging because it's plain to see that Europeans do care about Inuit. But it's also becoming obvious that the so-called Inuit exemption actually makes this fight harder for us. The Inuit lawsuits against the EU are working their way through the courts. In the meantime, there's another protest coming up on the International Day of Protest Against Seal Hunting. Calling all Inuit, animal rights activists are planning to protest against seal hunting in Toronto on March 13, 2013. If you are in Toronto or you're willing to come to Toronto, please come and join us, whether you're Inuk or just a supporter of Inuit hunting rights. We're going to go try to crash their protests with the little mini counter protest, I guess. Um, or at least go and see if we can have a conversation with them. Um, because I'm curious, you know, I've never really met these 
anti-sealers face to face. And I have some questions I want to ask, ask them, you know. Do they even think about Inuit sealing? Do they, do they ever consider how we're affected by these protests? So this particular protest was organized by IFA, um, but today IFA's main anti-sealing rep is Cheryl Fink. Um, I see her face and name a lot, and I've been trying to get a hold of her through their um, website contact form, but I've been getting no response. So it'll be really cool if I get to meet her in person at this protest. Awesome. Rosalind Akrlupchuk commented on your status. Cool, I'll see you there. Yay! Awesome. So at least we'll have like five Inuit. <laughs> we'll see who shows up. The same Inuit students that went to Europe saw my Facebook post and the whole class is heading from Ottawa to Toronto on a bus. I just wanted to remind you that we don't have to behave the way other protesters behave. Just be true to yourself. Remember how your parents and your grandparents would want you to behave. And we're there to remind Canadians that this does affect us. You know, often people misunderstand and think, oh, there are exemptions for Inuit and that we're not affected. But we need to remind Canadians that we are affected. The places where they live in Europe or southern Canada or America, they torture animals. They eat tortured animals every day. And we, but we don't. Well, you'll be making that point lots today, I'm sure. Yeah. They're kind of like busting our whole economy where we'll be forced into mining our minerals because there's been like so much opposition from the inner side. And they know that they need our vote to be able to go up there. And like if we don't have any sort of economy <laughs> to support ourselves, we'll have to go into that. We're going to take lots of pictures today so we can post stuff on Facebook. Oh, if it's not on Facebook yeah. or YouTube, it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> International Day of Action Against Seal Hunting. And so we as Inuit wanted to gather and kind of do a little bit of a, a counter protest uh, to educate people. And so we decided to come down here uh, to one of the busiest street corners in uh, the country to uh, reach as many people as we could. It's just frustrating to hear about laws being passed banning seal skin when leather and sheep skin and, and, and all kinds of stuff like that are allowed to be sold. It just feels discriminatory. Supporting our seal, not the U European Union. It's about us. <laughs> when we have pressures from, you know, massive companies that want to bring in uranium mines and caribou calving grounds, and it's so frustrating when we're fighting those fights to be attacked on the sealing issue, which is not a threat at all. Our tribe seal, so should you. Our tribe seal, so should you. And it takes me right. So we're here to defend our right to hunt seals, but we also want to have a better relationship with environmental groups and animal rights groups because 
believe it or not, we're on the same side. Did the animal rights folks show up today, too? Nope. Before this, I thought maybe the animal groups weren't getting my interview requests. But I traveled over 2,000 kilometers to see them, and they didn't even show up to their own event once they heard we're coming. Clearly, they're deliberately avoiding us. Our legal challenges to the ban are nearing their end, and we're doing what we can to make our voices heard. Ayu has organized a seal celebration day. And my friend Carlene Aria has organized a petition to overturn the ban. Blizzard uh, warning in effect. Blizzard ending late this morning, then snowing. Wind south of the 50, casting to 70, diminishing to 30 late this morning, and then becoming light late this afternoon. Today, despite all of our hard work, the EU courts announced their decision on the Inuit lawsuits against the seal ban, and it didn't go our way. They couldn't defend their decision based on animal welfare or conservation standards. So they say they based it on moral grounds, because apparently sealing offends Europeans. In the EU court's press release, they included a sentence stating that this decision helps the Inuit. I don't understand how they figure rejecting a lawsuit launched by us helps us. I use in Ottawa to meet with lawyers about the results. Just because a million or a billion people do something and pass a legislation, it doesn't make it right. It, and it will never, ever make it right. Against 32,000 Inuit, for instance, and you're up against uh, billions of people, it still doesn't make, make it right, even if it's majority. Okay? It's, still, it's still wrong. <laughs> we don't care if you starve to death or if you die of this, uh, we are more interested in the seal. Here we are feeling so insignificant. They only, we're only able to pass that legislation and reject this claim today because they put in wording saying, but the Inuit are okay, we respect them. They know that if the general public knew that we're affected, they would not be no. able to ba pass this ban. That's, that gives me inspiration that we have a shot. I think we really need to up our game with the, the social media stuff. We need to learn to understand their language. How does a tiny, remote population change the minds of a billion people? How do we do it with no money, when animal groups are spending millions a year working against us? How do we do it when our anger is too quiet and soft to get anyone's attention? Spring is coming soon, and with it comes the annual anti-sealing bonanza. I've been putting my little tweets out there, but it's just not enough. Then, just when I was wondering how to make something go viral, Ellen DeGeneres hosted the Oscars. During the awards, she took a celebrity-packed selfie picture. Her Oscar selfie became the most retweeted photo of all time. It's everywhere. The photo was taken on a Samsung device, and Samsung agreed to donate a dollar for every retweet to a charity of Ellen's choice. 
Ellen is against seal hunting and chose to donate $1.5 million to the Humane Society of the United States, as if they didn't have enough money already. Now, one of the richest anti-sealing groups is getting attention from one of the biggest events in social media history, just as anti-sealing season is starting up for the year. But then, a young Inuk woman made a YouTube video and addressed it directly to Ellen. And it's getting some media attention, so check it out. Ellen, my name is Killa Inarak Stress. I own sealskin boots, and they are super cute, and I am proud to say that I own them. But I also eat seal meat more times than I can count. So when you said, let me quote, seal hunting is one of the most atrocious and inhumane acts against animals allowed by any government. Personally, I was hurt <laughs> with the words that you use Suddenly, a huge part of your fan base is targeting us as a people. It isn't fair. On three, say seal one, two, three, seal Inspired by Killa's video, my friend Lakuruk and I were talking about what else we could do. And she suggested we make a play on the word selfie and post seal fees, pictures of ourselves wearing seal skin or hunting or eating seals. It's a cheeky but positive way to bring awareness to the fact that Inuit are affected by anti-sealing campaigns. So we posted our own seal fees, we got in touch with local media and put out a call for other Inuit to join us and use the hashtag seal fee and Inuit are responding. The seal fees are going great, but the extreme anti-sealers have found us and our tiny little corner of the internet has exploded with hateful messages. Um, my friend Tanya Taga posted a seal fee of her cute chubby baby uh, next to a freshly caught seal and somebody photoshopped her baby being skinned alive. Some of the messages that my friends and I are receiving are truly shocking. It always catches me off guard. <clears throat> God, you're gonna be able to see my eyes. The media requests about seal fees keep coming, and today Ayu and I got an invitation from Al Jazeera, which is a big network that broadcasts around the world. They want us to speak with Rebecca Aldworth from the Humane Society on a live show, and she's actually agreed. This is my best shot so far at having a conversation with her. How much you want to bet she's going to talk about subsistence hunting? sure my uh, seal skin earrings are ready to go. <laughs> We're indoors, so I'm not going to wear a seal coat or mitts, um, but I've got to have something seal skin. I was really excited to finally have a chance to talk to Rebecca Aldworth from the Humane Society. And uh, unfortunately, last night she canceled. So here we are again. Um, ready to have a conversation and the other side is just not there. 
Are you, have you seen the selfie campaign? What, what did you think about it? Yes, I have. I'm very proud of the Inuit that have come out in large numbers and posted their garments and their pride in, in wearing seal. Our digital producer, Malika Bilal, is here and is our bridge to the digital community. We also got a video comment um, from the International Fund for Animal Welfare. Have a listen to this. Hi, my name is Cheryl Fink. I'm the Director of Canadian Wildlife Campaigns for the International Fund for Animal Welfare. IFA does not oppose subsistence hunting of seals by Inuit as a source of food. We recognize that food security is very important. Our campaigns are directed against the commercial slaughter of wildlife for international trade, whether it's elephants being killed for their tusks, rhinos for their horns, or seals for their skins. That is the sort of hunting that has shown to be unsustainable over the long term. Thanks for letting us make this clarification. So, Alethea, several organizations talking about their clarifications, but what are your thoughts on this? And, and does that clarification really make a difference if in the minds of, let's say, those of us here in the state, we hear, we hear about seal hunting, we think bad? Yeah. <laughs> Please notice, she said, IFA is not against Inuit subsistence hunting. What she fails to say and she knows this, and all of these animal groups know this, is that although Inuit hunt primarily for food, we do also sell skins for commercial income. So there is a commercial aspect to the Inuit hunt, and we need to be able to sell those skins in order to continue hunting. And when you reduce the amount of uh, hunting that's going on, that's less food on the table for Inuit. I just kept thinking, I wish the people from Humane Society and IFA would have shown up. Um, it would have been a much more interesting call. The Al Jazeera interview proves once again how hard it can be to get a truly balanced discussion on this issue. Even so, challenging the subsistence-only image seems to be working. More people are asking about Inuit sealing, and we can challenge misinformation, but Inuk style. I've been disappointed so many times on this issue that I try not to get excited about anything. But something good has happened. When Inuit think of anti-sealing, we think of Greenpeace. And today, Greenpeace apologized for the damage they've done to the Inuit economy and culture. The apology isn't perfect, but it's a step in the right direction for them to admit they harmed us and that they'll work to right their wrongs. They're still talking about being against commercial sealing, as if that doesn't include us. I guess time will tell if they'll actually do anything beyond apologizing. Despite finally getting a few emails back from a couple of these groups, I still haven't managed to get any of them on camera. But recently, I found an interesting old article about a woman who used to work for IFA. It says she brokered a deal with the Southern Canadian Sealers, where IFA would be given joint power to decide on their hunt quotas, and their hunt would become full use, meaning all the meat, oil, and skins would be used. But apparently, when she took the deal to her supervisors at IFA, she was fired. I found her on Twitter, and she's agreed to Skype with me. My name is Anamika Rowell. Uh, at one point, I worked for the International Fund for Animal Welfare for about um, 
12, 13 years, if I recall correctly, but they were perpetuating um, a picture of, of uh, sealers and the seal hunt that really was not in line with reality. Um, so I started changing my mind a little bit and the sealers wanted the same thing as, as we, we did. That is a full utilization hunt. We brokered a deal. Um, I brought it to my bosses and shortly after I was fired. Um, I am, over the years I've become convinced that animal welfare and animal rights organizations are not really interested in ending any of these things, uh, especially the Canadian seal hunt, because it brings in millions of dollars. Was, was there much conversation ever about Inuits and how Inuit were affected by these campaigns? Nobody wanted to talk about the fact that the Inuits were just as much, if not more, affected by the European ban as the sealers were. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's amazing to hear you say that, because of course, I suspect that they knew. Um, I don't know if you heard this in the news, but Greenpeace, they apologized to Inuit. Did they really? Wow. They did. Uh, yes. <laughs> I can imagine, yes. Well, I, 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 I want to take the opportunity right now to apologize for my role while I work with IFAW in this whole thing um, because I am really uh, embarrassed and I'm very sorry that I actually was part of all this. And I, I feel really, it's, to, this, to this day, it's still, it still um, uh, weighs heavily on me. I'm sorry, I need to make you cry. <laughs> No, it's uh, it's happy tears. <laughs> I'm okay. That's good. Yeah. But no, seriously, I've I've always um, I've, I've to this as I said to this day, it still weighs heavily on me. So if there's anything I can do, please let me know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad you found me. After all these years of chasing anti-sealers and feeling invisible, it was so nice to talk to Anamika. She confirmed they've known about us all along. Last time I was in Kimmerud, Iswartok was a little boy tagging along with his grandfather. Now he's 13 years old and he's a hunter in his own right. He's providing for his community and it makes me proud. He and my son inspire me to keep sharing information respectfully and trust that will eventually turn the tide. It's time for a new model of animal activism and I hope the world will see that we as Inuit should be a part of it.